How's it going everybody? My name is Cody Campbell with High Ground Gaming and today we're going to be unboxing the Red Dragon Vishnu wireless mechanical gaming keyboard. This is an 87 key TKL keyboard. Uh, one of the really cool things about it is it has 2.4 gigahertz connection. That means it uses a USB dongle to connect to whatever device you want to connect to. It also has USB type C for a wired connection. That means it's going to charge faster and it's going to have a faster connection for when you're using it in a wired mode. It has a 2400 milliamps per hour battery. It uh, promises 10 hours of wireless gaming. If that's true, that's probably with the RGB turned off. As you can see from the case, this one does have RGB. The mechanical switches are from a brand called Outimu, I believe is how it's pronounced. I'm not sure about that, uh, but they're reds, linear reds, which is essentially uh, similar to uh, Cherry MX reds. I think that's it in terms of specs, at least the ones that we're, we're interested in. So without further ado, why don't we get into the actual unboxing? Here. Ah, this is my first unboxing and it's going terribly. I never want to rip the cardboard because I want the box to be all pristine. There we go. There we go. All right, progress. Inside the box is another box, which I also can't open. There we go. Doing this upside down, that's fine. All right. Da 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 da. Yep, totally doing this upside down. So here's the USB Type C cable. Uh, this looks like we've got a cable clip, probably for for keeping any excess organized. That's always good. Mechanical gaming switches. We'll have to open that up and see what's in there because. It appears all the switches are actually already intact. So, get these foam bits off here. All right, we got a wrist rest pad. Seems to be plastic, hard plastic. Okay. We've got, ooh, instructions. Those are always good. And a red dragon striker. Those gaming companies love their stickers, don't they? Oh, it's magnetic. Very cool. Gotta love that. That's easy. Snap on, snap off. Oh, it's got some nice rubber grips to it. That's good. It's good. It's not gonna be sliding around, especially for a wireless keyboard. You wanna make sure that it's very grippy because you know might be using it on multiple different surfaces. Not always on a uh, full table mouse pad or what have you. Looks like it's got some stand up feet. That's nice. And I like this. I like that the USB dongle right here for the uh, for the 2.4 gigahertz connectivity is has a little pocket to go in on the actual keyboard. That way, if you're using it for travel, you just keep it together and you don't have to worry about losing this little guy. Really like this. It's got a media volume control. It's got these four media control buttons here, which it feels like they're mm, not mechanical, but good quality. Sometimes the media button keys are an area that they skimp out on, but these feel good. Uh, the volume control wheel feels really good, actually. Uh, I have a Logitech and mine is kind of loose, just kind of free spins. This one has some, some tactile feel to it, which I enjoy. Uh, it has five, oh, 10 um, G keys, which I had forgotten about. These are, these are uh, keys that you can use to hot map commands like, or uh, hot keys. So there's 10 of these, five on the side, five on top. Now these are great, um, especially if you stream. For gaming, they're cool, especially if you do like any kinds of like MMOs or something like that, because you can hotkey, you know, spells or, or different items or what have you to them. But 
with streaming, this is great because you can hotkey commands to OBS. That way you don't have to alt tab out of the game every time you want to switch something. And it's all right on your keyboard. Keys feel good. They feel like mechanical reds should. I don't know if you can hear that through the mic, but. Pretty good. Uh, no, no sound in the actuation, just when the key bottoms out, which, you know, when you're gaming, you might actually not even bottom out because the actuation's only about halfway down on that bad boy. This is, uh, this is a good feeling keyboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, plug it in, try it out for a little while, and then later on, we'll be back with the review section. Peace out, guys. All right, we're back and now we're on to the review portion. Uh, the Red Dragon K596 is a fantastic keyboard. I've been using this for the last couple of weeks and I'm gonna be honest, I love it. It's a great, great keyboard. Uh, there's a couple things that I missed during the unboxing I was kind of beating myself up about when I was rewatching that video. First of all, I think I called these uh, cable management clips. These are keycap and switch removers. That's for if you have a dead switch and you need to swap it out, or if you want to swap out all your switches, uh, get a different kind. Secondly, I picked this up and I set it aside and I said, we'll have to open that in a second. And then I never did. Uh, this was actually some extra switches and this is kind of cool. It came with uh, two blues, two reds, two browns, and two blacks. Uh, the reds you are what's in the keyboard right now and you can use those if you need to swap out any dead or faulty switches uh, that came with your keyboard. But you also get the blues, the browns, and the blacks so that you can kind of feel those out in case you decide you want to switch all your switches down the line and get a different kind. Another thing about the Vishnu is that it comes with the OutEMU red linear switches. Now I didn't know much about OutEMU, I've never used their switches before, but these are fantastic. I actually have a Fnatic Mini Streak keyboard that has uh, Cherry MX Reds on it. I actually reviewed that. You can check out that review if you're interested in the description. Uh, and I compared it to these because they're both red switches and I wanted to see how these stacked up to the Cherry MX Reds. And honestly, I am not the biggest mechanical key switch aficionado, but I could hardly tell a difference except for when they were exactly side by side. I could kind of feel a difference there, but they're very, very similar. And if you're a little hesitant with a brand you're not familiar with, I get it, but these are good. They're solid. You're going to enjoy them. Connectivity is great. And that's what's most important for something that's uh, wireless like this. So the 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection is really, really nice. Um, I tested this playing Doom, which is a pretty fast paced FPS game. And I had no latency whatsoever. It felt exactly the same as my wired keyboard does. I played for a few hours and I never once felt any sort of lag whatsoever. It was fantastic. <laughs> Battery life, also great. I was right earlier in that the 10 hours that they promise is with the RGB turned off. Uh, it's closer to two hours with the RGB turned on. At least that's what it says in the manual. Uh, I did get a lot of battery life out of this. I think I only had to charge it once in the two weeks that I was using it. And I did use it wirelessly almost the entire time. I figured if you're buying a wireless keyboard, wireless is what you're interested in. So I didn't mess with the wired mode too much. It just seemed pointless. I know USB Type-C is fast. I don't need to uh, test that. Um, but here's the thing. The two hour battery life with the RGB on you know, that's fine. That's, it is what it is. RGB drains batteries. That's what RGB does. It does have this neat feature though. I think you've noticed this is turned off a couple times. Well, when you're using it in a wired or wireless mode, the RGB automatically turns off after one minute. And that's pretty cool because the whole time you're gaming, it's going to be on because you're never going to go more than a minute without touching a key. But say you want to get a snack, run to the bathroom, something like that, it switches to the RGB going off, which automatically saves battery life for the amount of time that you're doing it. And then the second you tap a key, RGB comes back on. 
The keyboard's still active. You tapping that key doesn't turn the keyboard on. It was already on. It's just taking the RGB offline in order to save battery. The RGB has a couple of cool features. Um, it has these side lights here, and these are supposed to sort of cast light onto your desk. It's a very subtle effect. I don't know if you can even really see it right there. You're really only gonna get this with the lights off and with the RGB on full brightness, but it is kind of nice. Um, it does have 18 different effects, but there's no control software. So you have to use certain commands on the keyboard in order to change the RGB. You're definitely gonna wanna hang on to your little instruction manual because all the commands are in here and that's kind of how you cycle through them. So it's usually FN and one of these six keys over here and those sort of cycle through different effects see that and that's how you change the RGB that's also how you can affect brightness and, or just turn it off altogether and those same sorts of commands are how you're actually going to map your macro keys so definitely hang on to the instruction manual don't be like I usually am and just pop that bad boy in the garbage um, <laughs> you're going to want to hang on to it. That's kind of my only critique of this keyboard is that that isn't the most user-friendly of thing. I prefer a software to control it, but it's not a huge deal, not a deal breaker for sure. The other thing that I'm a little mixed on actually is the wrist rest. Now it is magnetic, which my lizard brain just loves clacking that piece of plastic on there. That's great. I uh, can't get enough of it, honestly. But hard plastic isn't something that I love. It's kind of uncomfortable for me personally. I would prefer uh, memory foam or uh, padding with pleather over it or something like that. But that's kind of a personal preference thing. You might like a really rigid wrist rest. I prefer a padded one because I've got little baby wrists, but that's just me. Other than that, I absolutely love it. Uh, right now it MSRPs at $79.99. That is a fantastic price. You're not going to find a name brand gaming keyboard for less than that, to be perfectly honest. And with all the features that this thing comes with, it's more than worth the two teeny weeny little downsides. Uh, we actually put this keyboard as our pick for the best TKL wireless gaming keyboard on our list of the best wireless gaming keyboards. Uh, we'll put the link to that in the description below. There are a couple of wireless TKL gaming keyboards that I like better, but nothing under $100. I actually really love this keyboard, so we're going to go ahead and give it a 9 out of 10. All right. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, we're just starting the High Ground Gaming channel, so Getting on early would be great. That's really going to uh, encourage us to make more videos and more content like this. Thanks for watching. Happy gaming.